Okay, I'm back. Um, I'm sorry this gets a little long, but as I said, I don't know what parts not to show you, so you can flip through them if you don't want to see them. I did do a little. I started lining with a thinner line of the brown mix. I'll call it the brown-orange mix. And what that's going to do is it's going to continue the lines to look like these in here and we're gonna we're gonna lay them in first for the shape as we did on the other segments they don't have to be perfect as you could see and then we're gonna wet them in a bit and blend them in now this is a line I, I purposely left that because I'm gonna just try to make it look a little more natural and I'm brave. I'm going to do it while you're watching me. So I'm just going to pull this. I don't like how it goes nyeh, nyeh, like that. So I'm going to kind of just try to add more to make it rounder. There we go. And we'll see what happens. Like I said, when I'm learning to. But I mean, that could happen with anyone as far as, you know, it's just the shape came out kind of different when you did that first tracing. Now, as I look at the pumpkin, um, in between, I think I got stuff on there. I'll just pull it off with water. See how it kind of comes up? This is because the paper is better. There you go. Don't even see it. Um, as I'm looking at my pumpkin in between, it looks like it's not orange enough, if that makes any sense. So one thing I want to do is put another wash of orange on it on most of the areas because I want an orange. It looks more brown and it looks a little bit too muted, which is fine. It's better to have too little than too much. So I'm going to pick up our orange here and water and I'm going to start in a dark area just in case and just add a little bit of toning on it so I'm dipping in clean water to dilute the strength of that now see the difference that makes right away just that one area you could also just put a little water first one section at a time I would do. Pick up with a pretty wet brush, a little bit of color. And again, test the waters. Start in the darkest area and wash it. And this is a real good opportunity for you to leave your light side lighter. You don't have to add that much because in that pumpkin that looked so good that everybody liked, you could see... In the brighter areas, there's very little color. So, I mean, just those two washes, look at the difference that we made. But I do want to put a little bit more on this side. Not quite as much, maybe. So, I'm going to wet my brush. Wet that area. And now I just picked up with the tip instead of the whole brush. And I'm going to start at the seam. I'll call it the seam where the two sections meet and I just kind of tickled it. I didn't bring it all the way across because I didn't want to bring it all the way onto that light part. And I'm just going to move it around. And you know, let the water flow where it wants. That's what gives it that nice washy watercolory look. So I'm going to go to my next section while I'm upside down. Wet it down and then see how it pulls in it's floating on that water that I just put down and it's very easy to move it and control it I'm gonna leave that section open a little I guess the what the goal is is to make it a little uneven See how it's starting to really take shape. 
seam here we're gonna this is the dark side don't forget the dark side of our pumpkin same down here one more layer this is all at your discretion this is where you have to think and look now look at the difference if you go back to the beginning of this segment how much warmer and fuller and nicer this looks now this is our bright side we don't want too much on it but it, it still needs more color I feel so we'll start down low because it's where it's going to be you have less light and then we'll color it but it's more toning it's still far brighter than the other side and then the, the segment that I don't like I'm gonna mix more you can see as I'm running out I'm just pulling from both the red and the yellow and a little bit of the orange and I'm just kind of remixing so I'm gonna add another layer here and kind of work it up okay and I want to set this part here and here a little bit back so the stem looks like it's in front of it because it looks flat there now so I'm going to take an orange mix with a little brown to make it darker and I'm going to kind of just shade it don't want as much color in the front because our sun's coming from there our light source but the back you want the back to be less defined and darker you see how they changed it a little bit and I want to define these little areas here so I'm gonna go into the Van Dyke Brown, which is the deep brown on its own. And I'm gonna just take the tip of the brush, make sure it's not too wet from your previous step. You could skip around and do it and kind of just define it a little. See, this is spreading a little, but it's okay. Kind of just gauge it and very, very barely touch it. Now, Artland's brush is awesome. Look at the thin line you could pull with this brush. And I'm going to pull out from the stem a little. Kind of set the stem in. Okay, you see how it's taking shape, how all these steps matter? It's very hard for me to write patterns for stuff like this because it's so much at your discretion. Now, I'm just taking the straight up Van Dyke Brown and adding some deep color down here. That's our dark area. Okay. And while that's drying, I'm going to skip over to the stem, the green, rinse my brush in the big water, and pull a little of the darker shade of green on the tip and kind of redefine. the shadows and the segments for the stem.
you want it darker where it meets the meat of the pumpkin and the brown you kind of want to smush that in you want a thinner line here you want darker underneath that round part of the stem though you can dance the brush see how sloppy for lack of better term there we go now you might want to tone the pumpkin with a little green here and there so what I'm gonna do I rinsed my brush completely loaded up with water I would have changed this water if I wasn't um, filming because it needs it probably needs some changing but it's not gonna hurt just a very light wash of green you could test it on your strip if you want very light wash of green and then just here and there add some toning see how little and how little does a lot you don't want to cover all those highlights but you want to bleed it into there it makes it look more natural Same down here. Now see how we're getting all these colors from about five or six of your basic colors. You'll find that you like certain colors better. See what a difference that made? Um, we need to set it on ground, so I'm going to take some of the Van Dyke brown, the dark brown, and I'm going to try, I have some um, red violet, and I'm going to mix that with the brown. Because that, that'll give a really, like a nice, cool shadow underneath. And you can see how little paint I'm using. Now, since the light's coming from here, we want a heavier shadow on this side. It. it just gives a little bit of that reddish violet color to the brown that looks really nice and I'm gonna let it dry and maybe give it one more layer but for now I'm gonna we'll let it dry it's not quite done. We'll do probably one more segment and finish it up to the point where I think then you kind of understand. Okay? Thanks. All right, this is pretty dry. And um, we're pretty much going to be done, I guess. Um, as you can see on this one, I did much darker. And all I did was do more layers of that, the stripes and, you know, the divisions, I guess, and darker layer underneath. And we could keep doing that, but the video has already turned into quite a long one, so um, you could do that on your own and play. I want to redo the shadow a little bit, and I'm going to use, it is a little pink to me. It's pinker than what I envisioned, so I'm going to put more brown into our red-violet and Van Dyke brown mix. Okay, just a bit more. So there's a little bit of the um, red-violet in there, but I don't know. I didn't like it as much as I thought I would. So it's easy enough to fix, and I, I don't dislike it. I just think... It needs to be darker anyway. So I'm going to wet this so it moves. 
it's one thing about the paint is it likes to move on water. As you can see where it's dry paper, it just wants to skate across the top, especially on the cold pressed papers that are a little bit more textured. But this kind of looks nice anyway with the two, two colors in. And you could even pick up some straight Van Dyke brown. Van Dyke's a nice color. It's, um, I use it a lot. It's like asphalt almost in deco art. It's a very, I think it's a warm brown, but it's transparent a little bit. So it's nice for shading. I did bring black out, but I didn't even use it. So I think I'll leave that like that. The other thing that I would do um, to give it a little oomph maybe is on your shade areas. You could use a little bit of that red violet. I would use just a tad of brown with it to tone it a little. And you could use it on your most, your deepest shades because it's gonna, it's gonna, um, Go with that orange, your orange shade's really nice. And it'll really give the orange some depth. But just a little, like I said, you don't wanna mess your, if you like what you have, then leave it. You know, and if you're looking for something to just tone a little bit more, maybe your shadows. This is red violet mixed with um, the Van Dyke Brown. And see how it gives that little pinkish glow. I think I did more of that on the other one than this. But it's kind of nice. So you could play around with it like that. Experiment. See, I like how it, it looks there. I'm going to put more on this, this division up here. Probably mix a little in with your orange mix, even. We'll see what happens there. And get that a little bit. Ooh, that's nice, because that gives it more opacity. Play with them. Have fun. That's the whole point of art. And you're going to make, you can make 10 and they'll look, all 10 will look different. That's how it's supposed to be, kind of. It doesn't have to be a cookie cutter of what your neighbor's doing or your best designer friend is doing or your artist friend is doing. It should be something that you want to do. And everyone should be unique. See, I like how that the red violet toned it really nice. Okay, and as a final little thing, you might want to give some little curly cues. And I'm mixing the hooker's green with the Van Dyke brown to do this. You have a semi-full brush. And just draw some little curly cues. See, Aunt Lynn's brush is awesome. Go right on that tip. This is scary, but it's fun. How many do we want? Now see, I got water there. I could get rid of that. We'll see if we did, can. And one more. I don't want these even. I just want them there. Okay. So, that is your painting lesson in a nutshell. There, I'm going to remove that. Now, see, you're scared of watercolor, but eh, everything's fixable. And like I said, this isn't even the best paper. Okay, so there's your pumpkin. 
I hope to see pumpkins up on our group on the Let's Paint with Sheila Landry group on Facebook. Come and join us if you're not already there. I hope you enjoy the lesson. I will put the line work somewhere. I'll figure it out. Or just email me at SheilaLandryDesigns at gmail.com. And you could visit my website at ToePaintingDesigns.com and visit our Facebook groups and just enjoy painting. I hope you like this. Thanks for stopping by. Leave comments so I know if you like it or not or what you'd want to do next. Thank you. Bye-bye.